church and school. And again, I have the privilege of being here with you on Christmas Day to celebrate our Savior's birth. So today we marvel at the birth of our Savior and we ponder at what that means for us. And we do so by singing our opening hymn printed for you in the worship folder, hymn 34. God bless our worship today.
in word and deed, we have borne your name in vain. We do not deserve to be called children of God. Forgive us for our foolish independence, our wayward willfulness. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to proclaim your name boldly to the world. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours.
fathers by the prophets at many times and in many ways. In these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact imprint of the divine nature. He sustains all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high. The Son became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my Son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be his Father, and he will be my Son. And again, when he brought his firstborn into the world, he said, Let all God's angels worship him. About the angels, he says, he makes his messengers winds and his ministers flaming fire. But about the Son, he says, God, your throne is forever and ever, and the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy beyond your companions. This, too, is the word of our God. We sing our next hymn in the prayer of the Flesh and dwelled among us, 
we have seen his glory, the glory he has as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated.
It's not that they, in and of themselves, are, are nice-looking feet. It, it's really what those feet are, are doing. These feet, they're, they're running. They're running to bring good news. And good news, yes, good news, was what the people to whom Isaiah first wrote these words, it's what they needed to hear. Because recall some of your Bible history. God's people, the, the people living in Jerusalem, had in a number of ways over time just kind of let go of God. They, they, they had forsaken God. And, and, and let's be fair, God, is, he's a God of love. And so he sent prophet after prophet after prophet to those people, trying to warn them, to warn them that they were on this path to destruction and that they needed to repent. But they, they really didn't listen. They, they didn't repent. And so some not so nice feet, feet of Babylonian armies came and they surrounded that, that city of Jerusalem and they carried those people into captivity. Exile. And that brings us to this prophecy that is before us today. Because here in this prophecy, we are, are told that those captives would be set free and, and those exiles would go home. And we actually we actually sing about this moment. You know it quite well, I think. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. That's the picture that Isaiah shares here, a time when, when beautiful feet will be running free and proclaiming peace and good tidings and salvation. Shouting that wonderful news, your God is king, your God reigns. And watching, watching with their own eyes, they would see this and they too would lift their voices with joy. And even the ruins of Jerusalem would join in and, and burst into song. This would be quite a moment. A loud, impossible to miss moment. But how did all this happen? If you have it open, uh, we see how in verse 10. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm, and all the ends of the earth will see. You ever come to a task and, and you and you roll up your sleeves? You're probably thinking something like manual labor, something difficult, something hard. You know, I've got to roll up my sleeves. I'm thinking of washing the dishes. I don't want to get my sleeves wet. That's the picture that Isaiah gives us here. God is, God is rolling up his sleeves because he's got some work to do. It would be God who would deliver those captives. He would be the one who would set them free. And, and no one would be able to question that it was his holy arm that did all of this work. And so you step back for a moment and you look at all of this. Isaiah, he's really given us a, a number of different body parts to look at. Let's, let's maybe review them. We have beautiful feet running to bring good news. We have those eyes of the watchman that are, that are seeing all of this. We have, we have lips lifting their, their voices in joy. And then we got this arm, this bare arm of God bringing deliverance, bringing salvation. Does any of this sound familiar? Does it sound like something that we're celebrating here today? Because what Isaiah writes here, if, if you look closer at, at verse 10, what Isaiah writes here, what he speaks of, isn't just some obscure historical snapshot of one nation's deliverance. The Lord will lay bare his arm in front of whom? Do you see it there? All nations, all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Isaiah's prophecy then it wasn't just a picture of one nation's deliverance. It was the deliverance of all sinners for all time, which brings us to a different picture. One I think you know very, very well. A time when, when an angel appeared to some watchman, not of, not of a city, but, but of sheep. And said to them, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. God has rolled up his sleeves and laid bare his arm. And the word, as we saw in John chapter 1, our gospel lesson, the word, Jesus, has become flesh and made his dwelling among us. And so there we see him, God, resting in a manger, those, that little heart beating full of life. And you think about that. God lying there in a manger. Why? Why did he 
Why did he do that? Why did God do the hard work of, of, of rolling up his sleeves and, and laying bare his arm and, and becoming one of us? Well, look at the feet. I told you we were going to talk about feet today, didn't I? So look at Jesus' feet. God, the, the creator of all things. God, the creator of things like
to ponder what this all means for us. So this morning, I, I invite you to look at your own arms and your own beautiful feet, because yes, even your feet, they are beautiful. Because here's the thing, what happened at Christmas has changed you from head to foot. And here's what I mean by that. How many times, like today, how many times have you sung Christmas hymns like these ones in your life? Probably most of you, all of your life. And how many times, how many times have you come into a church like this, especially around Christmas time, for not just one, but maybe two or four, even three services? And why? Because at some point in, in your life, maybe, maybe as a baby, maybe later on as an adult, beautiful feet came to you with a message of God's grace and a message of God's salvation. And an arm pointed you to God and said, your God is king, your God reigns. And then that God, your God, through water and the word, stepped into your heart and showed you
great joy. The Savior has been born for us, for fulfilling your prophecies, and in the fullness of time, sending your Son to be our Savior. We give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. What a great mystery of our faith this is, that God has become fully human for our salvation. Even though he is the all-powerful Lord of all, he is wrapped in strips of cloth and lined in a manger. Help us always believe that this precious child was born in our substitute to be our Savior. In the midst of our joy, we grieve for the many people in our world who do not know that Jesus has come to bring them forgiveness and healing. As the shepherds spread abroad the good news of the birth of the Savior, born for all the world, may we also make use of the unique opportunities this holiday presents to tell others of what we have seen and heard concerning the child. God grant that the true peace between God and all of mankind may comfort all people. As the angels sang out their praise, move us also to sing our praise to you today and every the joy of Christmas remains in our hearts. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious.